Governor, you told NBC's Chuck Todd in a recent interview on Meet the Press, quote, there's a broad spectrum of Americans that are really frustrated with the discourse that's happening at the edge. Why are they so frustrated? Well, I think the, they're frustrated uh, with a discourse at the edge because it's not reflecting the issues they're feeling in their real life. Uh, there are things that I want to say that can be uh, manufactured issues mm -hmm. that may affect a small minority and people can feel deeply, but the, the clickbait that drives social media, the clickbait that drives online cable news, they know that if they have an issue that agitates people, gets people angry and divides people, they get more, more views. So, I mean, we're dealing with American capitalism. These are business models. But you go talk to people in America and they're saying, hey, my food costs more than it did a year ago. My fuel for my tractor costs more than it did a year ago. I'm worried about global stability. Are we going to, I didn't think there was going to be World War III. I've got three kids in their 20s. I literally said, wow, I never thought I'd be talking to you about World War III, but with the Cold War we're in with China and the actual war that's going on in Eastern Europe with Russia, uh, you get nervous about that. And I think that we, we as leaders need to say, who's gonna be the leader that's gonna pull America together? Who's gonna unite the country? Who's gonna help us focus on the real issues that we're facing, as opposed to these things that are great for you know, driving, driving out the vote, uh, say in a primary. But the, you know, we've got real issues as a country and we've got real issues in the world that we have to face. So in your estimation, the big three issues for voters are, the economy, U.S. energy policy, and national security. And those things are completely interrelated. And we, I feel, as m many people in my state of North Dakota feel, uh, is that the Biden administration, does, it's not just a cor course correction. I mean, we're talking a 180 degree different turn because whether it's inflation, taxes, spending, the deficit, trade on the economy, all of that needs to be turned around. Energy policy, we got an energy policy that's effectively, which is, instead of selling energy to our allies uh, and stop buying it from our adversaries, the Biden administration is doing the opposite. They're out, you talk to a family in Williston, North Dakota, in the Bakken that's out of work when the Biden administration is going to Venezuela or the Middle East and saying, can you produce more energy ahead of the midterms? Uh, it's, it's almost unthinkable to me that they literally drained, the Biden administration drained the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which is a strategic asset for all Americans in case we get into a global conflict. They drained that in half 400 million barrels to get the prices lower before the midterms. That's not strategic. I mean, that, that's just unbelievable to me. So we, and if you care about the environment, which we all do, I know people in Iowa do, people in North Dakota do, because the people here are the farmers and ranchers that own the land. Nobody cares more about the land and the water than the people that live on it. So having some bureaucrat from DC try to tell us out here in the Great Plains in the Midwest, you know, what we should be doing uh, makes no sense. And then they're going to Venezuela, who doesn't even have an EPA. The, if you care about the environment, you would want to have every ounce of energy produced in America. And if you say, hey, I want sustainable aviation fuel, the only place that's going to come is from places like Iowa in the Corn Belt, because we've got the ability to decarbonize liquid fuels. That's so much smarter than trying to go down a whole EV world. And if you say, you say, well, how does this tie into, how does this tie into global stability? Well, if we're going to trade OPEC, for, for an all EV electric vehicle strategy, which the Biden administration is doing, guess what? 85% of the rare earth minerals are coming from China. So we're just gonna trade our dependence from OPEC to China, to Sinopec, and that's bad for the future of our, our country, and, it's, and it's, it's part of what's creating the global instability. So yeah, those are the three issues, and as you can tell, I could go on and on about those three. I'm quite passionate. Polling shows that voters are not happy about the prospects of a rematch between former President Trump and President Biden in 2024. How do the American people end up with different choices when these two men sit at the top of polls in their respective parties? Well, man, I just say it's an understatement. I've never seen a poll where 93% of Americans agree on anything, but 93% said they'd like to see a different matchup in 2024. Uh, but I, I think, again, everybody says, hey, how are we going to get there? The Super Bowl is not till next February. Nobody knows who's going to be in that Super Bowl, but I, I got pundits telling me right now that they, it's already decided. They know who the two people are going to be in the Super Bowl next year. I'm like, how is that possible? We haven't even played a game yet. So we're excited about where, where we are. We, you know, North uh, New Hampshire poll came out yesterday. We're at 6%. We're tied for fourth in a New Hampshire poll, a qualifying poll. And, and I want to say quite like this, but nobody knows us. I mean, it's like we, everybody ahead of us is someone who's got been served in a national office. Mm -hmm. They have a national name recognition. They've run for president before. They've been running for president the last two years. The, the difference is when people 
see us, they like, hey, we like what we hear, we like what we see, we want to get no more, and so we think we're in a great position, uh, you know, heading into this thing, and I, I think that there are going to be different choices for America, and we intend to be one of those when it comes to next year. Former President Trump's legal troubles are back in the headlines today. The former president claims he's the target of a grand jury investigation now into January 6th. Were the former president's actions on January 6th wrong? Well, Matt, I, I, this is the question I get asked on every national show, every local show, but I, I think there's, like I said, there's a whole industry built around uh, the former president, and I'll just leave that to them. The court system, uh, people in America are innocent until proven guilty. I know when I'm on the ground in Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, people on the ground are saying, look, we're worried that the justice system is two-tiered. It's different for one party than it is the other party. It's treating you know, one family different than it's treating another family. And I think when we start eroding the institutions of democracy, that's the beginning of the end of democracy. And so that's a real concern for me. But I can tell you under a Bergman administration, there's gonna be one system of justice, not two. People are gonna be treated equally and fairly. And we won't be you know, weaponizing the DOJ against our political opponents. That's something we won't be doing. I'm gonna ask you to look into your political crystal ball for me. Give me the headline in the Des Moines Register, January 16th, the day after the Iowa caucuses. Well, I think in the, the day after the Iowa caucuses, what we're hoping for is a, a, a strong showing in Iowa. That's what we're hoping for. And we, we, uh, and we hope that there's a fabulous turnout. I mean, we hope that people that, are, that understand that elections matter, Iowans know that, they're very sophisticated, but primary elections really matter. And Iowa's got a super important role to play in winnowing the field and sort of determining you know, what direction we wanna go as a country. And I hope that the Iowans that, that are gonna be out supporting us uh, next January, or they're looking to the future and they're looking to say, hey, we can have a stronger economy, we can have safer cities, we can have uh, a, a better education system, we can have lower cost healthcare, we can have a US energy industry that's true energy independence where we're, we're, we're thriving. I, I mean, again, just to go back, Blinken and Yellen both go to China I did not read, maybe you did, I've not seen an article that said they once brought up energy. China imports 10 million barrels of oil a day. They're the largest importer in the world. This is our strategic weapon that we could be using in any discussion with them. And, we're, and this administration doesn't even bring it up when they're over there because they're too busy trying to kill the US industry here. And that includes all liquid fuels. That includes, you know, if you're gonna kill internal combustion machines, that means you're anti-ethanol as well and anti-biofuels. And so again, it makes no economic sense, no business sense, no geo political sense to me on, on what they're doing. But I, I hope that the, the uh, next year or next January that you're going to see, we're going to see a strong supporting turnout. We're going to have a big turnout and people are going to say, we like the guy that cares about the issues that matter to us most. And that candidate is Doug Burgum. Governor Doug Burgum of North Dakota. Best of luck on the campaign trail, sir. Great to be with you, Matt. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us on. Appreciate yeah. it.